Yeah, what makes for good sumo commentating? That's different for everyone. So that's very much a personal taste and flavor. You know, it's like asking someone what's a good hamburger. You know, everyone has got a, a different taste. So I, if you're familiar with uh, Jim Brockmeyer from the, the Brockmeyer uh, Funny or Dice skit that became a, a series. So I, I have fun with it. So obviously, you know, I'm involved with sumo and I'm meeting Rikshi daily and I know all the stuff. So I like that, but it's entertainment at the end of the day. So I mix in a lot of pop culture references. You know, I think I put 22 public enemy song titles into one two hour broadcast and, and only about three people caught it. Um, <laughs> so i know it's kind of childish maybe a little bit but i mean it's it's fun you know you put out stuff for different people as long as you're doing the job and describing what's happening and being quiet when you're supposed to be quiet and you know but with sumo obviously there's a lot of i mean each bout is a couple of seconds and then you got four minutes of essentially dead air between the next one so there are people obviously who would like rather you just shut up entirely and just listen they want to listen to the thing but that's not how sports media works. And I mean, they're free to mute it if they want to, but some commentators keep it very dry, keep it very factual. Some, it's it's more of a, it's like painters or anything, you know, it's basically, you know, how you approach it is your, as long as you're hitting your marks and getting the right information out there, the way you do it then is more just your own individualistic style. So, um, I would be the type maybe who would create people who love and hate what I do, you know, so, um, you know. We love what yeah. you do. Yeah, yeah um, there's people who love what I do. There's people who cannot stand what I do, but that's fine. Like, you, it would be crazy if everyone enjoyed it, you know. If everyone liked what you were doing, then it would be really weird. And you'd be like, I'm, going to, I'm doing something wrong here, you know. If everyone is liking it, it's so bland, maybe. And then people who don't like bland stuff for it, you know, so. Oh, it's the same with our podcast, too. Yeah, People either yeah. Really I can't stand your podcast, but I'm willing. <laughs> you know, I set you up perfectly for that, didn't yeah. I? I'm it's like, like <laughs> I feel like people generally like us. No, it's like, but there the are other, people who don't. So it's like a grand sumo breakdown. I mean, those guys haven't a clue what they're talking about, but I still pay them money. You know, <laughs> I mean, it's more, that's that's more of a charity type thing. You know, you feel sorry for them, and you're like, ah, maybe if I give them some money, they'll be able to buy a book and read and learn about sumo. You know? <laughs> We're going to see those guys uh, in, a in, couple Texas weeks. in a couple of weeks. Uh, we know yeah. that you give shit to them and uh, it's pretty they deserve funny. It. Yeah. They do. They they, do. They've been very sweet. The whole the sumo podcasting world, there's three English language podcasts about sumo, but everyone's been very kind to us and very, very nice. Um, hey, have you ever seen Endo Smile? I mean, yes. I've seen it. Okay. Yes, yes, okay. yes. But I signed an NDA, so I'm not allowed to say what happened. <laughs> So when you're in the booth, um, mm. is there any food allowed or it's like, there's like Murray, stop bringing your hard boiled eggs in here. Like no one wants to smell that in here. Like, what do you do in the booth with somebody else? And I mean, there's not rules about it, but having food, like you don't want like <laughs> several million people hearing you chewing, you know, it's like, I mean, I don't know. There could be somebody that could take you down and you're like, well, well I, I've made, really I made the mistake right of now. bringing in. I made the mistake of bringing in fizzy water a couple of times at the beginning, you know, and then you're like, you're drinking that and you're like, mm, where's the off switch on the mic? You know, you don't want to be burping right into the screen. Um, no, just usually just there's some drink there, water, you know, because it can get hot in the booth and get hot and heavy in the booth. Um, <laughs> but no, no, there's like, it's, we're very professional. Okay. Mm. I have we'll cut this out but like what if somebody farts in the booth like if it's loud what if what if <laughs> <laughs> that's that's never happened that's never happened i'd have to think about what would happen in that situation <laughs> oh man i make okay. sure to eat garlic the night before oh to... i'm sure that depends on, it depends on who i'm on with you know and how well we're getting on at that time you know so I got a list of foods and the re and the re reactions that those foods cause, you know. I was like, I'm on with this guy today. Yep, onions it is. <laughs> Who do you get along with the best? No, I get along with all of them. All of, all them. of them. They're all yeah, they're all great guys. That's so very funny. Uh, very Who? very cheeky and very funny. Who? They all do. Yeah. There's like a yeah, you guys yeah. all have a I sense mean, of humor that we appreciate and we pick up on. Yes. So with Regards like Murray, Murray Ross and Hero, I mean, they've been involved in sumo broadcasting 
you know, like 25 years or more longer, like since the late 90s even. And I mean, they've seen it all and they've done it all, you know. So I came in in 2012, maybe, to NHK's live broadcasts. So, I mean, they were all veterans who had done everything you could imagine at that stage. So, I mean, it was really good to come in. So it was all easy for me, basically slotting in alongside all of those guys. And Raja obviously is a bit newer, but um, Raja as well, he prepares. I mean, he knows his stuff, so, you know. And he's taken the role on the Grand Sumo previews as uh, the punching bag for the various rikishi. So, I mean, how could you not have that? <laughs> we do. We love it. Every time. Yes. Okay, speaking of preparation, what kind do you do? I am DV for movie quotes, I guess. Um, <laughs> Um, no, what so I, I mean, the, obviously the flow of the thing is going on. So when you're commentating on live sports, you know, you're going to have to follow the action and commentate on it, but you know, the lineup of the day and who's facing each other. So the main thing basically for me is what's the current overall situation? How have these, is there any relevant stuff in bouts? So I tend to watch bouts between the rickshaw or fight. So I say, if Hakuho was up against Terno Fuji on a particular day, I would go back through all the fights that they've had, especially over the last year. And I would watch the entire things like from start to finish. So if there was a lot of Mata, um, how the tactics had changed between them. So if, if one guy was winning a lot of fights in a certain way, and then the other guy changed something up, um, see if there was any particular stories. So, I mean, obviously there's a lot of background, you know, between every fight, especially, yeah. but then then it's just a matter, as a color commentator, literally your job is to, you know, so the play-by-play the -play commentator is the person who's sketching the outline of what's going on and providing the details. And the color commentator, literally the person who's coming in and coloring it in. Like that's where the name comes from. You're providing color and entertainment and background. So the color commentator's job is essentially to fill in the picture for the people listening at home. So the play-by-play -play person can tell you what's happening on screen and can describe the action and explain the action as it's happening. And then my job is, so like that, what's the background of the fight? Did somebody, so for example, Henry Miller, Sentoru, mm -hmm. um, I wrote a story about him years ago when he was doing mixed martial arts and he was fighting a guy. But the background to that story is 15 years earlier when they were both rikishi, the other guy had hinkered him or sidestepped him at the tachi eye and Henry, went off the doyo, I think it was, or fell down and tore his bicep and ended up five years in the lower divisions. So, and he'd never met that guy again. And then he, like most of his career, he'd spent in the unpaid ranks because he got injured. The guy sidestepped him at the fight. I mean, that's sumo and the stuff like that happens. But, you know, if you're an athlete, obviously you hold on to that. And then 15 years later, they're meeting in the ring in a different sport. And, you know, Henry knocked him down three times and knocked him out in the first round. So it was like he was waiting 15 years for that revenge. So the background, stuff like that, or if they were kids, like say Goedo and Tochioza, and like they were rivals from the age of four, Takakesho and Onosho, like all the fights, all the fights that they fought as junior high school students, like that, like they were neck and neck. I mean, they were the, the thing for me was I thought Onosho would be the one who would push on, but it was actually ended up being Takakesho. Obviously injuries wrecked Onosho's chances, but I mean, those two were very similar, like round, small, burly guys, you know, two cannonballs crashing into each other. And they were like that all the way junior high school, high school, you know, all the way up. So um, there's a mountain of backstory between them. So it's just stuff like that, finding that and uh, then just having other things, if there's something topical to talk about or some news. But like, like I say, I tend to throw in a lot of other references and things because the, the weird thing about sumo is your audience is a very mixed audience that's the difference like if, if you see if you're a commentator on a football match soccer football baseball 99 percent of your people are you know very familiar with the teams and the players and the history of the game but if you're commentating on sumo on nhk you're going to have people like yourselves who know you know intimate details of rikishi and then you're going to have people a huge amount of your audience going to be tuning in for the first time and have no idea what's going on. Mm -hmm. So you have to cater to both audiences. So there's a little bit of over explaining going on and a little bit of overuse of English terms. Like, so maybe Hiro will say like Gyoji referee or something like that. So 
Um, people deal with it in different ways, but you always have to be mindful. It's the same in Japan times. You always have to be mindful of you're dealing with a, a very diverse audience, people who know a lot, people who don't know anything, people who may be a little bit familiar with the sport. So you can't alienate either section. Like you can't just dumb it down and explain everything because then it'll be boring to the long-term fans, but you can't keep it really technical because then the people who are tuning in for the first time won't have any idea what's happening. So you just, you try and, it's a little bit like, TV shows uh, when they used to be serialized in the 1980s before streaming. So they couldn't really do season long arcs because people couldn't catch up, right? So if, if you watched a TV show in the 1980s and you turned it on and you're like, oh, this is really interesting. I'll go back and watch the first five episodes. You couldn't do that, right? right so right. So that's why they did episodic shows like each show was a contained piece a little bit of over arc on a season maybe before like for the longer term fans but um it's like that with sumo you have to realize that a lot of your audience is going to be watching it for the first time so you got to cater to them because obviously new fans are the lifeblood right so you want to grow your audience and you want people to come back so um just like that there's a lot going on and a lot you have to think about and then if you're like me as well, you're just like seeing how much you can get away with in each podcast without getting fired as well. So, you know, I mean, <laughs> I mean, there, there have been times where like, yeah, that might be the last one for me now. Let's see if I'm going to get the producer. It gives me the evil eye on the way out the door. You know, but thankfully, well, still I'm here. glad you're still there. Um, I, it, okay. So one tiny question. Um, when you were fighting, was your Shakona just John gunning? Or so do you have a real... amateur sumo doesn't use shikona. That's only pro. Okay, so yeah. then surely you, you made one up for yourself. Right. That's my question. Well, I used to be on like the sumo forum and stuff like that. I used to use Nishinoshima, which is West Island, and but I actually there was a tournament, an amateur tournament in Tokyo, maybe 15 years ago, and there was a Czech, a guy from the Czech Republic called Peter. He was studying at Tokyo University, and he was part of the sumo team there. And he entered me in that tournament using the Shikona. So like everyone else in the tournament, like they were, I didn't know he'd done it. So everyone else in this, like this is an amateur tournament, like college students from around Japan. So everyone else, you have like Toru Suzaki and, you know, you have Rin Taro, you know, Sato and Peter Matus and then Nishi no Shima. And then everyone thought I was the most pretentious, ridiculous. And like I was stepping up onto the ring and I was like, the fuck and i looked over and he's just like ah. and just like everyone's looking i'm like who does this guy think he is you know and of course i lost immediately and then it made me look even worse you know he's up there like you know why does why doesn't he have a top knot and you know like skibito or something like that like you know pretentious in the extreme so thanks oh, peter for that you know that made my day what is it nishinoshima nishinoshima i used to use that Nishino name Nishino yeah. Nishinoshima. 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 Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nishinoshima. Yeah. yeah um okay tochi notion he seems yes. like a very hot-headed guy is he no he's lovely he's really ah. nice yeah tochi notion is one of the nicest guys you can meet he's really well, that, fun. that's kind of one of my yeah. questions is like who has that <laughs> who has that <laughs> that it thing no that it thing they, like in the ring they're like ooh, fire but then the second they leave they're like like the biggest teddy bear who's got the biggest game in the ring and the opposite of it out of the ring uh there's i like yeah, maybe terno fuji i guess he's a little bit like that you know mm -hmm. osin arashi used to be like that as well um yeah some guys just switch it on you know it's like um my favorite rikishi of all time was yokozuna wakanohana the first one mm -hmm. uh takanohana's uncle so he was known as the dojo no oni demon of the dojo yeah. demon of the ring so it was he was notoriously like that you know like as soon as he stepped into the ring it was like personality switched and it was just like out to kill the guys you know but once he was outside it was just a regular person so yeah he, i mean they're professional athletes so a lot of them are like that you know once they're once the the pads come on or moshi comes on or whatever it is and you once you strap up and you're in in the arena you have they work at that too you know mm -hmm. there's a there's a lot of um you see guys who look at the tsukebito down the hanamichi like they they do some the reason they have the routines is for that very purpose you know it's to put themselves in that zone or mental mindset where they're completely focused so you get all kinds of things akebono used to stare up at the ceiling and roll the eyes to the back of his head because 
uh, I think it was in the book of his, somebody said that uh, he, at the time they said, what was it? It al activated the alpha B waves or something as opposed to C waves. I think it was just like, you know, pseudoscientific nonsense, but um, it worked like, you know, it, it put him in the zone. So like, you know, he, he thought it was like changing the brain waves chemistry or something like that. But um, yeah, you get different guys. That's for sure he used to, you know, um, do a line. Um, well, I didn't say that. <laughs> you didn't say, did that. say that. Do you think Asa Shoryu um, and like Hoshoryu, do you think like every day Asa Shoryu is like texting him and he's like... Asa Shoryu is just like... I, Asa Shoryu is really funny. I get on well with Asa Shoryu, you know? Yeah. So he's extremely intense, but like there's a little bit of a tongue in cheek to a lot of it, you know? I mean, he, he has... He can definitely blow his top for sure. Like when he gets angry, he gets really angry. But, um, you know, a lot of guys like that, if you give it back to them just as good as they get, you know, they kind of, they they like you more and they just, you know, roll with it. So now I, I on a personal level, I always got on well with Asashoryu and I liked him, you know. Um, I mean, he, as a Yokozuna, obviously he, he didn't fit in with the ideal, the whole Hinkaku and all the rest of it. But yeah. Uh, freed of the restrictions of sumo he's a lot happier with himself and doing all the stuff that he's doing so you know that's okay. good i was gonna ask this related to sumo but i want to open mm. it up and uh, allow you to answer it in relation to any sport um mm. your favorite like sports athlete interaction that you've had with someone ever ever in any sport favorite yeah. sports interaction like someone oh. you met or something or and be awkward first time you met somebody you said something you got tongue tied who knows me no. <laughs> i get tongue tied you don't strike me as someone that ever gets tongue tied no, you don't okay. get rattled no i tell them i ask them if they want my autograph which is always funny you know? <laughs> it's like what i like doing is if you're with some famous athlete and somebody comes up and asks for a picture I give the athlete the picture and put my arm around the person. <laughs> like, no, 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 I want the picture with him. I was like, really? why him? What would you want a picture with him for, you know? Um, no, I can't, oh man, you stopped me there now. I can't think of a, a particular thing. Just, you know, I've had a lot of fun with athletes over the years. So um, there's just too many to even find one at the moment, you know? It's not an interaction, but like, the moment of getting somebody into Ozumo, like that's that was that's always special. Like when Osu Narashi, when the Oyakata accepted him, or uh, Brody Henderson, Homari Nishiki, like the moment when he was brought, like that that moment when somebody is accepted into Ozumo. I mean, obviously things don't work out obviously a lot of the time, but it's it's a unique achievement. So it's, it, there's a certain high that you would get from that or like feeling of achievement that you wouldn't get anywhere else, you know? Oh, well, um, <clears throat> I'd like to wrap up by just saying, thank you. Thank you. You are an angel. And um, thank you for giving us like a, a slice of who you are as a yeah. person, but also- well, There's only person. about three minutes of sumo content in this entire thing. So you'll probably have to, to the pick up, you know? But when we were talking about this before, no, we, we like actually that. were like that. We're like, I think people want to know who John Gunning is. And I don't think they do, to be honest with you now. I really we'll don't. Think well, there's two yeah. people you want to, and yeah. this one and this one. It's your lowest ranked podcast episode ever. You'd be like, that was you a bad idea. And the worst thing, of course, like is you, you put me on after Konishki, like a legendary Ozek who's hanging out with like Princess <laughs> Diana and Michael Jackson, you know? Next week, next week, we've got a guy from the West of Ireland that nobody knows. You know? No, it's true. People kept writing in and they were like, dream big, you two. Ask for John Gunning. It came in over and they were over. talking about physical bigness. They weren't talking about big is in the sense of like figuratively big, literally big. You know? No, but but for real, you are such a delight to interview. And I know this is what you do. You interview people and you're a journalist. So um, from people who just have a sumo podcast, we thank you very oh, much. Oh, you guys are fantastic. You're so well prepared. You, I mean, we you know, have fun you, and we, we, just love, a we love the sport. And um, I have for a long, long time. And um, we found this wonderful 
a group of people that listen to us that are fans that are just as kooky and weird as we are, it seems. And um, they keep listening and people keep giving us awesome interviews. So it, it only you helps Next us. time you move back to Japan, instead of being a friend of a Disney princess, maybe you can just, you know, become a sumo commentator. Why yeah. not? Oh well, that's, like, you know, it's like I said, since Katrina left, there are no women's voices in sumo. You know, that's yeah. why your podcast you know? is extremely valuable. You know? Well, if you heard us commentating, you know, it'd be like, this one y'all i am so in love with this like, one. Oh my god if i can go it? Oh, i want to date him is he single i don't know but that was an incredible watanage but listen if i can get away with you know accusing guys of twerking in the ring i think you can get away of that you know oh poor bruden what yeah. is going on with him and Asano Yama? Well, there's a lot of things we didn't get to, but anyway, um, we want right. to thank you so so much. And um, but you'll be back in the studio for the next Bosch. Uh, so for uh, for the commentary that has not been decided, but I would think that's unlikely. But um, without giving too much away, I'm currently working on something with one of the major networks or in america about sumo so not network major streaming service shall we say uh that's all i'm gonna say on that there's there's something in the work so I'm, that may be you know okay keep oh your eyes out I'm, yeah okay we will. we will because that's really really that exciting. Is very exciting um bye Thanks, john guys. thank you bye. 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 see you